Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times. I'm Aditi Prasad and with me is the uh, editor-in-chief of Hindustan Times, Sukumar Rangatathan. Welcome, Sukumar. What changes after the horrible, horrific Kabul terror attack is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but before that, you know, when I woke up this morning and I saw the television and I saw Joe Biden, uh, lips trembling, hands trembling, eyes closing, uh, he seemed to be a... Uh, you know, his presidency seems to have taken a big blow after these horrible, horrific attacks by ISIS-K in at the Kabul airport and a hotel nearby. According to you, what changes for Biden? What changes uh, in the U.S. withdrawal strategy from here on? Things were already bad, but this is what happened last night was pretty much a worst-case scenario. Uh, there will be some people who say, we told you so, but no one expected that uh, an event, a terror attack of this intensity would happen so soon after the transfer of power. So uh, the U.S. is clearly shaken. Uh, they've lost uh, their own military personnel, around uh, 13 or 14 of them, uh, who've died as a result of this terror attack. Uh, changes a lot of things. Um, because one of the reasons why they wanted to withdraw from Afghanistan was really to uh, reduce fatalities, to uh, not fight a war that they no longer saw as their own. And it was a deal that was struck during the Trump presidency. And Biden was equally keen to do it. In fact, um, he himself has said, and many other people have observed, that he would have done this even had there not been an agreement. Uh, so he was dead set on doing this. And now he will have to pick up the pieces. Uh, this is what all of us have feared. We feared that, and I remember uh, we had this conversation, where uh, we feared that Afghanistan would become this hub of terror, this, this hot spot of terror. That's already happened. Uh, yeah, a magnet for uh, a variety of terrorist organizations, given the terrain, uh, given the kind of neighborhood it is in, uh, the proximity to... Uh, multiple avenues of finance uh, and um, and given history yeah uh, given history and multiple sources of finance because you know uh, opm um, uh, arms dealing uh, and the fact that you have uh, this uh, entire pool of uh, what can i say human resources that you can pretty well recruit from after indoctrinating them so and that has happened you are saying that that Afghanistan has already become a terror haven. So now there is Al Qaeda was already there, ISIS K is uh, also there, Taliban, in any case, many countries still consider them to a be a terrorist organization despite the fact that they are now rulers of Afghanistan. Uh, there was Amrullah Saleh, uh, you know, the former vice president of Afghanistan, who is now fighting the battle from Panjshir, uh, uh, you know, the anti-Taliban resistance, he put out a tweet this morning saying that, you know, how can, uh, you know, how can Taliban say that they, don't, they didn't know about this attack? And he insinuated that um, the Taliban is complicit in this uh, attack because they're not very different from ISIS-K. What do you have to sort of say about that? Could Taliban have been complicit in this attack? We don't know for sure whether the Taliban were complicit in this attack because this is one of those strange things where uh, alignments sort of form and then they unform. Right? So, so Al-Qaeda and Taliban, um, what is the relationship between them? At this point in time, most experts believe that the two organizations are together. Right? Uh, ISIS-K and Taliban, at this point in time, most experts again believe that they are antagonistic to each other. And you've seen those reports, I've seen those reports, everyone has seen these reports about an ISIS-K leader who was in a prison being killed by Taliban forces after many of the other prisoners were freed. And that was done deliberately. So I think uh, you'll have to see this from the message that each one of these organizations wants to send out to the world at large. And you'll have to look at it from the perspective of motivations. Now you look at the Taliban, for instance. The Taliban has its own brand of Sharia law, which it wants to impose in Afghanistan. It wants to rule, but at the same time, it wants to tell the world that, hey, we are not that Taliban, we are this Taliban, which means we are the good Taliban, and uh, we will rule. Although this is an, um, 
this is an organization which has never shown the capacity to rule or to govern. They've shown the capacity to fight. Uh, they, um, and, and their previous uh, rule in Afghanistan was oppressive. So they've shown the capacity to oppress, but they've not shown the capacity to rule or govern. Uh, but that's what that's the message they want to send. And from their perspective, they can use this attack to tell the rest of the world that the ISIS guys are the bad guys. We are fighting them. So please help us fight them. So it, it could be one more step towards their legitimacy, uh, at least among Western nations. Uh, of course, there is always the prospect of what you said, that they knew that this was happening. Uh, that there was some level of complicity, uh, we'll never know. Uh, but thank you for that perspective. Uh, you know, it's, as we said, the devil in the deep sea, uh, it's become a terrorist versus terrorist haven in, um, in Afghanistan for now. The situation is fast evolving and we will keep coming back to you with more updates. Stay tuned to Hindustan Times.